welcome all topic for today's session is riveted joint uh, from unit 2 that is design of fasteners in this sessions uh, we are going to discuss about uh, introduction parts of rivet material of rivets types of riveted joints import and important terms used in riveted joints in the first part that is introduction part we are going to discuss about the definition of rivets and riveted joints uh, what is a permanent fastening what is a temporary fastening and also the uses of the rivet in the second uh, uh, topic is the parts of the rivet so in this topic we are going to discuss the three important parts of the rivet and uh, also the process of riveting what are the different methods of uh, riveting that also we are going to discuss, discuss under this topic so next topic we are going to study is material of uh, uh, rivets here we are going to discuss about the different uh, materials used for the rivets and also the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, rivets next topic is types of riveted joints in this uh, uh, topic we are going to study the different types of uh, riveted joints uh, based on the way in which the parts are connected or joint so like uh, butt joint uh, lap joint single strap butt joint double strap butt joint etc with sketch so in the uh, the last topic is important terms used in riveted joints here we are going to uh, study the different terms like uh, Uh, different terms like pitch back pitch margin etc these terms are very important uh, while designing the riveted joint now coming to the introduction part the we are mainly uh, discuss the definition of uh, riveted joint and rivets now let us see what is a riveted joint is A riveted joint is a permanent fastening of two plates with the help of rivets, and a rivet is a permanent mechanical fastener used to join two plates together. That means in riveting, the parts are uh, joined with the use of uh, rivets. So one thing you will have to remember here is uh, the riveted joint is a permanent joint. That means the parts connected cannot be separated. or disassembled without damaging the connected parts so usually generally there are uh, two types of fasteners one is uh, known as a permanent fastening and another one is a temporary fastening permanent in permanent fastening the parts connected can be cannot be uh, what is say separated or disassembled without damaging the uh, connected parts the example for this is a riveted joint so you know that in a riveted joint parts cannot be separated without uh, breaking the joint similarly uh, the temporary fastening in a temporary fastening the parts connected can be easily separated or disassembled the example for this is parts connected by means of bolts and nuts so here in case in this screwed connection or a screwed joint we can disassemble the parts easily whenever required by just unscrewing the nut so in this case riveted joint just remember that whatever the joint you are going to get is a permanent in nature and uh, that means uh, parts cannot be separated or disassembled as in the case of a screwed joint also uh, in this uh, part uh, you are going to study the application or uses of the riveted joint so these rivets are quite extensively used in uh, structural work in the ship building building ships and uh, in the boiler shells in the railway bridges tanks etc now coming to the uh, this topic that's a parts of a rivet so there are only three parts the cylindrical portion is known as a shank and another part is a head 
and the lower portion or lower part is known as a tail. These are the three important parts of a rivet, shank, head and uh, tail. So, <clears throat> this uh, usually the size of the rivet is given by uh, the diameter of this shank. So, that means uh, if I, whenever I say the size of the rivet is 10 mm, it means that the diameter of the shank portion is 10 mm. So, otherwise I can say that always the rivets are specified by the shank diameter. Size is, uh, rivet size is given by the diameter of the shank. So, another uh, top portion is known as head. There are different forms or shapes of heads are available like uh, snap head, countersunk head, mushroom head and uh, conical head etc. So, for different application, different types of, uh, uh, types of uh, rivets are used. For example, snap heads are used for the structural work and uh, countersunk rivets may be used for uh, ship building etc. And the lower portion is known as uh, tail. Actually, during riveting process, this portion, tail portion receives a blow from the hammer and it is deformed and takes the shape of a head. So, thereby the parts to be connected will be held tightly and uh, we are going to get a permanent joint. So, these are the three important parts of the rivet that is a shank, head and tail. Now, coming to the uh, riveting process. So, usually the two parts are joined by using a rivet. Here the process is, first a hole is drilled in the two parts uh, that are to be connected. And after that, the rivet is inserted through the holes and uh, a die is placed over the tail portion and uh, a blow is applied by means of a hammer. Due to this, the tail is hammer, I mean tail is deformed and the shank portion is expanded and it uh, fills the hole and uh, tail is deformed and takes the shape of the head. So, this is how uh, the two parts are, then the two parts are connected or joined tightly in order to get a permanent uh, joint. So, this is uh, the process of riveting. And usually there will be uh, two types of uh, uh, riveting process. One is known as the hand riveting and another one is known as a machine riveting. In case of a hand riveting, usually the blow is uh, uh, applied to the tail by means of a hammer which is manually operated. For small jobs, small works, this type of the welding process is, uh, this type of the riveting process is adopted. And in case of a machine uh, uh, riveting, Actually, tail receives a blow from the hammer and that hammer is operated by means of a machine. And the machine is usually operated by means of a uh, steam or hydro hydraulically operated or it may be pneumatically operated. Usually, whatever the die you are placing over the tail uh, is a part of the hammer. So, hammer is operated by the machine. So, for large uh, works, we are using this uh, machine riveting processes. So, another classification is uh, cold riveting and uh, hot riveting. In this case, in uh, cold riveting, actually the cold rivet is inserted through the hole and uh, blow is applied on the tail and uh, it takes the shape of the head. And in case of a hot riveting, this rivet is heated to a red hot condition and after that it is inserted through the holes and blow is applied to the tail and it takes the shape of a head. And uh, usually the uh, cold riveting is used for structural work, structural joint and hot riveting is used for uh, leak proof joints. So this is uh, the riveting process and also the different, I mean, uh, to, different uh, uh, methods of uh, riveting that is uh, hot riveting and cold riveting and also the machine riveting and hand riveting. 
now coming to the uh, material of the uh, rivets so usually the material of the rivets must be tough and uh, ductile that means the property needed for the rivet material is one is the toughness another one is a ductility so we have already uh, studied that during uh, riveting process the tail of the what is a uh, rivet is uh, takes the shape of the uh, head so that's why the material must be ductile so ductility is nothing but it is the property of the material to be uh, drawn into wires similarly it should be tough in order to withstand the load or the stresses the suitable material for this is a steel that is low carbon steel and nickel steels are used for the rivets and also the there are the aluminum is used for the rivet copper is used for the rivet and uh, uh, brass is also used for the rivet so these are the some other um, uh, what is a materials uh, used for the rivets but uh, if the strength and uh, uh, leak proof is the major criteria needed then the steel rivets are quite uh, extensively used now coming to the advantages and disadvantages of uh, these uh, rivets so advantages is uh, it is reliable and uh, uh, it is a reliable and non ferrous uh, uh, metals can be riveted and also the dissimilar metals can also be riveted coming to the disadvantages labor cost is more due to holes plates becomes weak riveting causes uh, more noise and the parts uh, cannot be separated because it is a permanent joint so these are uh, the things we are going to study in the in this particular topic the material as well as the advantages and disadvantages now coming to the types of uh, riveted joints there are mainly uh, two types of riveted joints depending upon the way in which the plates are connected so this classification is mainly depends upon how the two plates are connected so first one is the lap joint the another one is butt joint now let us see what is the uh, lap joint and what is uh, uh, what, what is butt joint what is the difference uh, between these two so you can see here the sketch uh, of the single riveted lap joint and a lap joint is that in which one plate overlaps the other and the two plates are then riveted together so you can see in the uh, sketch here so this is one of the plates and this is another plate so these two plates are overlapping with each other therefore it is referred to as a lap joint and after that the riveting is done say this is the rivet and if you go for the top you also you can see uh, this is the one one of the plates and this is the another plate to be joined they are overlapping with each other and this is one row of rivet it consists of three rivets so that's why here the riveting is done uh, through the uh, top plate and the bottom plate and uh, it is a single riveted lap joint because it uh, consists of because it consists of a uh, single row or a one row of rivets as shown in the figure here now coming to the butt joint a butt joint is that in which the main plates are kept in alignment butting each other and a cover plate is placed either on one side or on both sides of the main plates so you can see this sketch here so what's the difference here is in a butt joint as the name indicates two plates to be connected are butt against each other this is one of the plates and this is the another plate and they butt against this particular edge and the cover plate or a strap plate is placed above it this is the strap plate or a cover plate in the top you also you can see this is one of the plates this is the another plate they are but against each other along this particular edge 
and this is the cover plate or a stab plate which is placed above the two plates and this is the riveting how the riveting is done one row and this is the second uh, another row and uh, it is an example for a single strap butt joint because here uh, the uh, one plate one main plate consists of only one row of rivet and another main plate consists only one row of rivet that's why it is a single riveted butt joint so you will have to remember that in case of a lap joint two plates overlap with each other and after that riveting is done and in case of a butt joint two plates are butt against each other and one cover plate one or two cover plates are placed and after that riveting is done so here the cover plate um, may be placed either on one side or on both sides of the main plate that means the two cover plates also can be used uh, one on the above and one on the bottom and after that riveting can be done uh, but in the figure it is a single strap only one cover plate is used and riveting is done and this is uh, the example for a single strap butt joint now uh, the butt joints are also, also classified into two types one is a single strap butt joint and a double strap butt joint and uh, let us see what's the difference between this single strap butt joint and double strap butt joint so the figure shows uh, the single strap butt joint here here what happens is uh, the two plates are butt against each other along this particular edge one and two so it is a butt joint and one cover plate is there this is the cover plate so one cover plate is there so it is a single strap butt joint if you go for the top view we can see this is one of the plates to be joined and this is the another plate to be joined they butt against along this particular edge this edge and after that one cover plate is placed here this is the cover plate and after that riveting is done as shown in the fixed sketch so this is one row of rivets this is another row of rivets but uh, this uh, row of rivet is only on one uh, plate one main plate and this row of rivet is another main plate that's why it is a single riveting butt joint with the single uh, cover plate so it is a butt joint single cover plate because only one cover plate is there and it is a single riveting because only one row of rivet is there say this is one row of rivet in this plate and this is another row of uh, rivet in this particular plate so each plate consists of only one row of rivet that's why it is a single riveting so so you remember that uh, in a single strap butt, uh, strap butt joint only one strap uh, plate or a cover plate is used instead of two plates now let us go for a double strap butt joint so in the double strap butt joint you can see two cover plates are used so again this is a butt joint because say this is uh, one of the main plates to be joined this is another main plate to be joined the butting edge is this in the top view we can see this is the one of the plates this is another plate to be joined the butting edge is this along this particular edge it is um, a butting edge but against each other and you can see clearly that two cover plates are used say this is one of the uh, one cover plate uh, above and this is another uh, what is a cover plate placed below the main plates that's why it is a double strap butt joint and after that the riveting is done as usual see this is one row of riveting and this is another row of riveting but it is a single riveting because the main plate consists of only one row here the another main plate consists of only one row of rivets here therefore it is a single riveting but it is a double strap butt joint because it consists of two strap plates this is the one strap plate this is another strap plate and after that it is riveted like this so it is a double strap uh, butt joint why it is a butt joint because two plates are butt against each other they are not overlapping but they are butt against each other therefore it is a double strap butt joint single riveting double strap butt joint
So the difference is in a single step bar joint and double step bar joint is it is now clear that in a single step bar joint there will be only one cover plate and in a double step bar joint there will be two cover plates as uh, shown in the sketch. Riveted joints are also classified depending upon the number of uh, rows of the rivets. Uh, it may be a, the first classification is single riveted joint and the second classification is double riveted joint and it may be a triple riveted joint also. So depending upon how many rows of uh, rivets are there in each plate. So here the main classification is done uh, depending upon the how many number of rows uh, how many number of rows of the rivet are there on the each plate depending upon it may be single riveted double riveted or a triple riveted now let us see uh, the sketch for this so this figure shows a single riveted lap joint this is a lap joint because this is one plate this is another plate these two plates are overlapping with each other so uh, it is a example for the lap joint and uh, it is a single riveted because there is only one row of rivet you can see here this is the only one row of rivet uh, which joins the these two plates overlapping plates therefore it is a single riveted lap joint so single riveted uh, joint you may get in butt joint also say this is a single riveted butt joint so why it is a butt joint because uh, these two plates this is one of the plates this is another plate they are butt against this particular edge and uh, riveting is done like this so you can see uh, this is one of the plates this is another plate this is the butting edge this edge and uh, after that the riveting is done uh, I mean a strap plate or a cover plate is placed here it is a two cover plates this is one of one cover plate this is the another cover plate so this is a single riveting butt joint with two cover plates butt joint with the two cover plates now the riveting is only one row of rivet in this particular plate and another row is in this particular one single row in another main plate so each main plate consists of only one row of rivet therefore it is a single uh, riveted butt joint with the two cover plates so the main difference between single riveted uh, uh, between uh, main feature of the single riveted lap joint is it it consists of only one row of rivet in case of a lap joint also in case of a butt joint it consists of one row of rivet in each side in each plate so this is one row of rivet in this particular plate and this is one row of rivet in this uh, the another plate to be joined therefore this is an example for single riveted butt joint and this is the example for the single riveted lap joint. Now let us see the double riveted joint. So this is the lap joint and this is the butt joint both are double riveted. So it is clearly visible here you can see that so two plates are overlapping with each other this is one plate this is another plate overlap with each other and after that riveting is done here. The top you also you can see this is one plate this is another plate overlapping with each other and you can see here this is the one row of rivet and this is another row of rivet that means there will be two rows of rivets are there uh, that's why it is a double riveted lap joint so the main feature of the double riveted lap joint is in case of a uh, double riveted lap joint there will be two rows of uh, rivets as uh, shown in the figure here in the sketch and uh, uh, in the case of a butt joint also you can see this is one of the plates to be joined this is another plate to be joined they are butt against each uh, along particular this edge you can see in the top view this is one plate this is the another plate this is the butting edge and after that two cover plates are uh, placed strap plates this is one strap plate this is another strap plate so this is a butt joint with the two cover plates and uh, whether it is a let us see whether it is a single riveting or a double riveting now say this is one row of rivet here 
and this is another row of rivet. So these two rows of rivets are in the main plate, one uh, left side plate. And similarly, there will be one row here, so one more row of rivet here, two rows in the right side plate. So that means each main plate consists of two rows of rivets. That's why it is a double uh, riveting, double riveting, but joint with double cover plates. So the main feature here is in case of a double riveted joint, there should be a two rows of rivet in case of a lap joint and also there should be a two rows of rivet on each plate in case of a butt joint. So difference is in a single riveted there will be only single row of rivet uh, both in case of a uh, lap joint as well as the butt joint and in case of a double riveting there should be two rows of rivets in case of a lap joint as well as in case of a butt joint. But remember in case of a butt joint uh, the there should be uh, the two rows on each plate say this one row this is another row it in, in the main plate left hand side plate and this is one row and this is another row it is the right hand side plate. That's why it is a double riveting butt joint with the two cover plates. And uh, again uh, the one more uh, classification is where the chain riveting and zigzag riveting. In case of a, if you have a look over here, say this is a lap joint, lap joint with uh, double riveting, one row of riveting here, another row of riveting here, two plates are overlapping with each other, so it is a lap joint, double riveting lap joint. And if you go for this sketch, you have a look for this sketch also, it is also a lap joint because one plate is here, another plate is here, overlap with each other. And this is also double riveting because one row of rivet is here, another row of rivet is here. Okay. And uh, in case of a, a chain riveting, you can see the two rivets uh, in the adjacent rows are just opposite to each other. So this rivet is opposite to this, this rivet is opposite to this and this rivet is also exactly opposite to this rivet. That means if the rivets in the two adjacent rows are opposite to each other then we can say that it is a chain riveting. It is a chain riveting. And uh, zigzag riveting you can see if you consider the, these two adjacent rows of rivets each rivet comes in the middle of two rivets. Say this rivet comes in the middle of these two rivets, this rivet comes in the middle of these two rivets and again this rivet comes in the middle of these two rivets. That means here the rivets are staggered and this is known as zigzag riveting. So in case of a zigzag riveting, the each rivet comes in the middle of uh, two rivets uh, of the adjacent row. So this is uh, the class of how uh, the I mean, uh, rivets are classified like uh, chain riveting and zigzag riveting. Now coming to the uh, uh, next part, next topic is important terms used in uh, riveted joints. So here we are going to study mainly the pitch, back pitch, diagonal pitch and margin. So pitch is nothing but it is the distance between the center point of one rivet to the center point of another rivet. So this distance, this distance is known as a pitch. In the same row, the center distance uh, from center distance of one rivet to, to, to the center distance of another rivet, that distance is known as a pitch. And back pitch means it is the perpendicular distance between the two rows of rivet. For example, if you consider uh, the uh, rivet, this rivet, the center point of rivet the, uh, to the center point of the adjacent rivet, this perpendicular distance is known as a back pitch. Similarly, the one more is a diagonal pitch and if you can see this is a zigzag riveting. So in the zigzag riveting, this diagonal distance is known as a diagonal pitch that is 
uh, distance from the center of one rivet to the center of another rivet this diagonal distance is known as a diagonal pitch and, uh, and one more uh, I mean, uh, term is a margin so you can see here margin is nothing but it is the distance from center of rivet to the edge of the plate so this horizontal distance is known as margin or marginal pitch just in order to avoid the failure, this marginal pitch M should be equal to 1.5 times the diameter, the diameter of the rivet. So this is, these are the, uh, the important terms that are very uh, useful in the design of the uh, riveted joint. Now coming to the uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, so far we have studied uh, so many topics with respect to the riveted joint. Now let us go for some of the multiple choice uh, questions related to the topic we have already studied. The first question is, a riveted joint is a dash fastening, temporary, detachable, permanent, none of the above. Here the answer is C, that is a, a riveted joint is a permanent fastening. So earlier in the first slide, we, I mean earlier slides, we studied that once uh, the uh, riveting is, up, I mean parts are joined uh, by means of rivets, we will get a permanent joint. That means the parts connected cannot be separated or disassembled uh, without damaging the connected parts. Therefore, a riveted joint is an example for a permanent uh, joint or a permanent fastening. So next question is, uh, the diameter of the rivet hole is usually dash the nominal diameter of the rivet. Answer is C, more than the nominal diameter of the rivet. That means, uh, during the riveting process, we know that usually the rivet is inserted through the hole, which is made uh, through the parts to be joined. And there should be some clearance between the rivet hole and uh, the rivet. Uh, this is because whenever uh, the glow is applied to the tail portion, then the shank portion will expand and it will fill the, uh, the that particular clearance. That's why uh, always the rivet hole is greater than or more than the nominal diameter of the rivet. So next question is a rivet is specified by shank diameter, length of the rivet, type of head, length of tail answer is shank diameter. So, while studying the parts of the rivet, uh, we come across the parts of the rivet that is a, a cylindrical portion of the rivet is known as a shank. So, we studied earlier that usually the rivet is specified or size of the rivet is given by the diameter of the shank only. That's why your answer is a rivet is specified by shank diameter. Next is uh, the Fourth question is, the center to center distance between two consecutive rivets in a row is called margin, pitch, back pitch and diagonal pitch. Your answer is the pitch. So in the last slide, uh, slide we have studied that the pitch is nothing but it is the distance from uh, center of one pitch. Oh, sorry, center of one uh, rivet to the center of another rivet in the same row. So that distance is known as a pitch. Therefore, center to touch distance between two consecutive rivets in a row is called pitch. Fifth question. A line joining the centers of rivets and parallel to the edge of the plate is known as back pitch, marginal pitch or margin, pitch line. Here the answer is the margin or marginal pitch. So again we studied uh, while studying the important terms of riveted joint, riveted joint. So you know that margin is nothing but it is the uh, distance from the center of rivet to the edge of the plate. Uh, so that's why here a line joining center of rivets and parallel to the edge of the plate is nothing but it is a margin. And the sixth question. Which of the following is not a main part of rivet? Head, shank, tail and thread. Answer is D. This is a thread. 
because thread is not a standard part of a or a main part of a rivet that you studied uh, in the parts of the rivet so you studied that the important parts of the rivet one is a cylindrical portion that is a shank and after that top portion is a head and uh, lower portion is known as a tail so three parts is shank head and tail and this thread is not the main part of the rivet so it comes only in a uh, screwed fashion as like uh, bolt so with this uh, once again uh, uh, let us uh, recall what you have studied earlier so we know that uh, the riveted joint uh, is nothing but it is a permanent fastening of two plates with the help of rivets and uh, rivets are used for joining the two plates in case of a riveting so you should remember that in case of a riveting it is a you are going to get a permanent joint or whatever the joint you are going to get is a permanent permanent in nature that means sparse joint cannot be separated or disassembled uh, easily without uh, uh, damaging the parts connected so that uh, this this the we have studied and coming to the uh, parts of the rivet uh, also we have studied three parts cylindrical part is known as a shank head and a tail and in this case you should remember that the rivet is specified by the diameter of the shank or the size of the rivet is given by the diameter of the shank and uh, the material also you have studied uh, so usually it is made up of steel that is a low carbon steel and uh, nickel steels are used and also the other materials used are aluminium copper brass etc so uh, two important uh, parameters to be considered with respect to the material is one is ductility another one is toughness and after that we have studied the two types of the joints um, one is the lap joint another one is a butt joint so in case of a lap joint two plates are overlapping with each other and after that the riveting is done and in case of a butt joint two plates two main plates are butt against each other and after that one or two cover plates that is one is a strap plates are placed and after that riveting is done so this is the main difference between the lap joint and butt joint and uh, the application of this lap joint and uh, butt joint say this is example for the your studied example for the lap joint over the two plates overlapping with each other now the force acting through these main plates say one force is act outward like here and force is acts outward here also uh, you can see the forces acting through these uh, two plates are not in a same straight line they are at a distance equal to the thickness of the plate due to this uh, a couple will be uh, there will be formation of the couple and due to this couple there will be a tendency uh, for the plate to bend the plate chances of bending of the joint is may be there therefore usually these lap joints are used for the transmission of uh, uh, lower amount of load or force and uh, in case of a butt joint you know that two plates are uh, butt against each other and after that strap plates are placed one uh, one strap plate or maybe placed or the sometimes you can use both the strap plates also cover plates and after that riveting is done this riveting may be a single riveting or it may be a double riveting here what happens is the force acts outward here similarly the force acts outward here and these two forces are in the same straight line and there will be no formation of the couple so there will be no chances of bending the joint that's why the butt joints are usually preferred for the transmission of the higher amount of load or force and after that we studied uh, the, uh, the the types of the butt joint also single strap butt joint and uh, double strap butt joint so in a single strap butt joint we are using only one cover plate 
and in a double step butt joint we are using the two cover plates one cover plate uh, above the main plates and another cover plate at the lower side of the uh, main plates and after that they are welded together i mean they are riveted together uh, in a sing uh, single riveting or it may be a double riveting so here it a uh, single uh, strap butt joint because only one cover plate is there and this figure shows the double cover plate you can see it is a butt joint and two strap joints one is a strap plate this is one strap plate this is another strap plate and after that it is uh, riveted together so it consists of the two cover plate that's why it is a double strap uh, double strap butt joint uh, another classification of the rivets joint it may be a lap joint or it may be a butt joint it may be a single riveting or it may be a double riveting or it may be a triple riveting and it may be a sometimes four rows of riveting also may be there depending upon the requirement so in a single riveted uh, lap joint uh, there is only one row of uh, rivet you can see here and in a double riveted uh, butt joint i mean a lap joint you can see uh, sorry single riveted uh, butt joint you can see one row of rivet in the one main plate another row of uh, rivet in the another plate so this is also single riveting so the main feature of the single riveted joint is there is only one row of rivets uh, on the main, uh, main plates you can uh, see here in a lap joint in the butt joint also there will be only one row of rivet in the one main plate one main uh, row of rivet in the second main joint now let us see the double riveted as i the i told you the in a double riveting joint there will be two rows of rivets so you can see this is one row of rivet this is another row of rivet plates are overlapping with each other so this is a, a double riveting lap joint similarly in a butt joint this is example for the double riveting you can see this is one row of rivet this is another row of rivet in the main plate left hand side plate again if you, i go for the right hand side plate this is the plate to be joined, joint right hand side again two rows are there one row and the second row so that's why it is a double riveting butt joint with two cover plates one cover plate and two cover so the difference here is in case of a single riveting joint only one row of rivet is there and in case of a double riveting there will be a two rows of Uh, riveting and after that uh, we have studied uh, the chain riveting and zigzag riveting also in a chain riveting the uh, rivets in two adjacent rows are just opposite to each other like this just opposite so this is an example for the chain riveting and in a zigzag riveting the rivet in the each rivet in the adjacent row is in the middle of two rivets of the another row for example i consider this row it is in the middle of these two rows uh, rivets if i consider this rivet it is in the middle of these two rivets so this uh, such a type of the structure riveting uh, structure is known as a zigzag uh, riveting and also we have studied some uh, important uh, uh, terms like pitch back pitch diagonal pitch and margin so pitch is nothing but it is the Uh, center to center distance in the same row this is the pitch and also we have studied the back pitch back pitch is nothing but the perpendicular distance between the two rows of rivet and also we have studied the diagonal pitch diagonal pitch is nothing but the diagonal distance from uh, two rivets from one rivet to the another rivet adjacent to rivet that diagonal distance in case of a zigzag riveting so that is known as a diagonal pitch and margin also you have studied margin is nothing but it is the uh, distance from the center of one rivet to the edge of the plate so this distance is known as a margin so with this uh, that completes the that completes the this particular session so uh, the reference is a textbook of machine design by rs kurmi and jk gupta and uh, thank you